I remember when the Secret Service was really secretive about what they did, how they went about their business of intelligence gathering. Harken back then to those halcyon days of yore. Flash forward to the now. And another embarrassing moment for the spy agency run amok. Backgrounder now with Miranda Kahn. Miranda? Ed, the Secret Service finds itself in hot water once again, this time for illegally accessing a congressman's personal file. An inspector general's investigation found at least 45 Secret Service employees looked at Congressman Jason Chavitz's unsuccessful application to join the Secret Service. The employees accessed the file after Chavitz started a probe into the agency. In March 31st, email assistant director Edward Lowry suggested Chavitz's personal information should be leaked to embarrass him. A few days later, the Daily Beast website reported the Secret Service rejected him for a job back in 2003. Chavitz says the tactic was designed to intimidate and embarrass him. We have a deep-seated cultural problem in the Secret Service. I worry that if they're doing this to me, they're doing it to who knows how many other people. Uh, I just... It's a little bit scary. Uh, the Secret Service diving into my background as a sitting member of Kai. I Edward Lowry denies leaking that information, and so far the investigation hasn't pinned down exactly who's behind it. Also adding some fuel to the fire, some question the way the inspector general actually handled the investigation. Some reports say Secret Service members were present during witness questioning, creating a potential conflict of interest. Ed, back to you. All right, Miranda, thank you. The political animal then begins right there. She's news director for the Tea Party News Network. First up, welcome Scotty Nell Hughes. He is Republican strategist who has absolutely nothing to hide from the Secret Service and will next week be broadcasting to us from a secret location for no apparent reason whatsoever, Fort O'Connell. I want to thank you both for joining us. So, Ford, I'm going to start with you right there. The Secret Service basically once again plying into people's background. Look, this is getting a little bit ridiculous here because I think that we've got an issue here where the Secret Service remains out of control. The Secret Service does not want to admit they're out of control, and the administration does zero about it. Well, exactly. The administration does zero about it because they don't want that headline in the news because it makes them look even worse. Frankly, it seems to be we cleaned house at the Secret Service, at least two-thirds of the senior administration. It apparently we need to start over again because the Secret Service's job is to be trustworthy and to protect the president. Right now, they have very little confidence. Nobody has any confidence with them. All right, Scotty, now let's just go ahead and play devil's advocate here. This is, of course, a government agency here. This is the Secret Service. Their motto is worthy of trust and confidence. But how much do we blame the president? president for this, though. Do we blame somebody else? No, I don't think you blame the president, but let's talk about why we're sitting here having this issue. First of all, this just shows if you run for office, you better let every skeleton out of the closet. So that job that you were passed over for, it will eventually come out. This is all about a representative, and granted he's one of our own, who's sitting there who's upset because it basically came out to the public that he was there was a better person than he to join the Secret Service. I'm sorry. Yes, I agree it shouldn't have leaked out there, but this is just one of those things that I think he might be making a bigger deal of it than it really should be. I think he should have just let it go, and, and then nobody would have ever really noticed this. Now I'm going, well, why was someone better for him to be a Secret Service agent? Well, could that be the same for the House of Representatives as well? We are not talking about any of our past But, but Scotty, here that would evening. all be true if they didn't have all these other big-time problems in the Secret Service. I would agree with you. In politics, everything's fair game, but this is the Secret Service, and we expect them to actually act like priests. Uh, which would be really nice if they but acted th at least logically and with acted with some class and style. Okay, hang on. i got to move on because i got a lot to do here. Here. Now, on Morning Joe, Jeb Bush, this was a little bit surprising, compares Senator Marco Rubio's leadership skills to President Obama's, saying that the senator from Florida may lack those skills entirely. Here's what he said. I think I have the leadership skills to fix things, and that's my strength, and right. that's what I talk about. And Marco was a, was a member of the House of Representatives when I was governor, and he followed my lead, and I'm proud of that. Right. But you do not think he has the leadership skills to fix things? It's not known. Uh, come on, Scotty Nell. That's got to be a little bit of a surprise here. No. These two guys were supposed to be pretty friendly. Yeah, that's a shot across the bow. Not at all. This is exactly what Jeb Bush needs to be doing right now. Instead of taking swipes at Donald Trump, because no person from Donald Trump is going to switch over to Jeb Bush, he needs to be going after Marco Rubio's base. It's, it's a lot of the same people. So, Jeb, take out Marco, and maybe those people might come to you. Same thing as Marco. Take your claws out of Trump and go after Jeb. Let the two of them have the cat fight on the beach in Florida, and let the other 40 candidates duke it out somewhere else. Ford, I like that, because it's about time everybody <laughs> stopped talking about Donald Trump and at least talked about somebody else in the race.
Yes, I agree with you, but here's the small problem for Jeb Bush. We can get a YouTube video up there when he said, well, gee, Marco Rubio has more experience than Barack Obama, and frankly, Mitt Romney should take him as the VP. Herein lies the problem. Jed's sliding in the polls. Marco Rubio's rising. I do agree with Scotty. If you want to lock off the establishment vote, guess what? One of them has to take out the other. But at the same time, this is more about Jeb Bush really sucking pond water right now. I got one minute left. Each of you gets one entirely different issue. Here we go. First of all, to you, Ford. Joe Biden will not appear in the first Democratic presidential debate. My God, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. What will CNN and the Democratic Party do now? They need Joe Biden. They do need Joe Biden, but he has 37 days till the first filing deadline. So not appearing in this debate doesn't matter. Here's the deal. Hillary Clinton's favorability with black voters was 75 percent. Now it's below 50. The door is open for Biden. The question is whether or not he takes it. All right, Scotty and LTU, here comes the last shot. Ben Carson said on Wednesday that a government like Nazi Germany's could reign over the United States. He brought up the word Hitler. Whether you like Ben Carson or not, come on, isn't this going a little too far, bringing Hitler into things here? It, it is, but when you sit there and you look at his fundraising totals just, just based off of the fact that he does not agree on having a Muslim in the White House, it works well for the base. It's a great to tool for him going forward. And I'm still, I'm sorry, I'm shocked that Ford O'Connor has agreed for, has agreed twice with me in this segment. Hell has frozen over. I Maybe Joe go, Biden is running for president. Let me mark it down right now. Joe Biden will become the emperor. He will absolutely have clothes on, and this is where it actually happened where the two of you agreed. I'm telling you, Ford's going to be in a clandestine location next week. He knows the Secret Service is out. <laughs> After him because now everybody knows that something's happened. He's changed. We don't know what to do from here on out. But now we at least have to say goodbye. Ford O'Connell and Scotty Nell Hughes, I'm telling you, I'm watching you, O'Connell. Next time out, thanks so much for joining us. Billions of dollars at stake every weekend in college football, and the players want their money. The sports professor dealing with the NCAA next.